coming up on Art Focus. If you don't have it in you, no amount of training will bring it out. That's for sure. You need to have something. You need to have a passion. You need to have a spark in there that drives you to want to improve upon it. Every child is born an artist. But to remain an artist is where the problem is. You should have something to hold on to within you to be able to even sit down to be trained as an artist. If you don't have that, you never make it. journey through life has been through Accra, Kumasi, and Accra, and then all over the world. So that has shaped me as a person. That has been the focus of my object as an artist. Uh, I've been working as an artist for 40, 40 years and, and counting. And uh, I've been in this all my life, you understand? I've been an artist all my life, since I was a child. My parents have encouraged me. I'm one of the few who has been encouraged by parents to, do the, you know, to pursue their skills or creative talent. So I've been at this like yeah, 40 years and counting. I trained as an artist through the, to the tertiary level. So I'm a product of the KNUSD. Well, I'm not a product of KNUSD. I'm a product of University of Science and Technology, now KNUSD. And my focus or my subjects relate to my experiences as a person. So everything you, every work you see in this exhibition reflects some aspect of me as a person and my experiences or interaction with my environment. That is where my inspiration comes from. My environment, my relationship with my environment, my relationship with myself, and my relationship with uh, people around me. So. I try as much as possible to remove negativity from my work, so I don't focus on that. I try as much as possible for my work to focus on uplifting people, you understand, and bringing uh, excitement into the life of people. Every work here is a microcosm of what happens in my world. So I capture that for posterity. Every single work you see here is an aspect of, or detail of things that have happened as I was developing as an artist. So that is where my focus is. When I finished college, you know, I, I taught for five years. And even within the five years, we've been I've been, you know, trying to shape up what I perceive as my identity as an artist. So when I've moved out from being a teacher, I went on to redefine myself properly, to develop skills that will shape up uh, how to project my message through my work. I have uh, 
worked steadily on a daily basis. I move into my studio every day from morning till late, till I can no longer function on my feet. And so I focus on developing my skills to a level where I can uh, project whatever message I have to the highest level. You know, I've been through various styles as an artist. I've worked with points, pointillism. I've worked with, uh, name them, uh, the knife in pasto, I've done all that. And then I settled in between using the knife and the pointillism. So what you see here is, is uh, the final product, the final stage of my development as an artist. My favorite medium is acrylics, you know, and I work in, the, in a style that people describe as abstract. I don't know if it's abstract to me. It's not abstract to me because it's a reflection of who I am. So that is not abstract to me. But it comes across to people as abstract, you know, so I leave it at that for people to judge. For me, it's a reflection of who I am. That's my style. So it's kind of very personal. My work is kind of very personal. So a lot of people find it difficult to relate, relate to it and get into it. That's fair. So I'm, I'm just one person who is a part of a bigger, you know, my crocus, my, a bigger body, you know, showing what I'm made of. So when you take that and add it to another person, you, you, then you'll be getting a bigger picture of what the world should be. That's it. What's your favorite medium? I use acrylics. Acrylics is what I use. And I've used it for years. I can point out some of the ones that excite me a bit more than the others. You know, I'm standing next to one of them and a few others here. But generally, all the works are like my babies. So it is difficult to take one or choose one above the other. But this definitely gladdens my heart. Yeah. Normally, you are supposed to find that story yourself. Normally, you're supposed because look, this is. That's why they call it art. The art, we artists go through an experience to bring, to bring, uh, to come up with a picture for, the, for people to look at and appreciate. Now, the idea is for you to experience what I went through to create this as a person. So as you're looking at it, if it doesn't, if it doesn't strike you, if you're looking at an artwork, and it doesn't do anything for you, it doesn't strike you in any way, you move on. Then it's not for you. But if you, 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 you see an artwork and something sparks, something, there's a spark in there for you, you stop there and try to experience it and try to explore it a bit more and try to find this from, from in there. So that is why I don't try to explain works to people. And I give them a title to give you something to work from, a, a, a point to work from, so that you can begin to, you know, find things for yourself that will enhance your understanding and experience. There is what you call a realistic art, which is there, which is straightforward, which, is, which you look at and you know exactly what, where it's going to. But I like to engage people. I like people to engage with what they see from my work. You are looking at work or, yeah, a practice that has been developed over more than 40 years. And so, 
when I stand here and decide that my work goes for this, it is to bring me satisfaction, first of all, and it is also to let you know that there's a lot of experience that has been put into this. So that goes to define how you, how, that goes to um, inform how you, you, you price your work. I've trained a lot of people from when I was teaching, uh, even, yeah, in the last 40 years, I've trained a lot of people and some of them are practicing artists right now. You know, my studio is always open to them. But you know, it is always difficult for the young ones these days to come to the older ones. For some reason, they are, I don't know whether it's in, they are intimidated by you or they are not sure whether they are welcome or something. For some reason, they find it difficult. When I was growing up, I go to my lectures homes and even stretch their canvases for them, just to be with them, to learn. They may not be teaching me directly, but as I'm there, I pick up things that I can use for myself later on, you know? But these days, it is, you don't find that happening. Yeah, but I train, I train, I've trained a lot of people. If you don't have it in you, no amount of training will bring it out. That's for sure. You need to have something. You need to have a passion. You need to have a spark in there that drives you to want to improve upon it. So if you don't have it in you, if you don't have that, every, every child is born an artist. But to remain an artist is where the problem is. You understand? If, if growing up, other things drive you away from your um, natural instincts, you lose it, okay? But you should have something to hold on to within you to be able to even sit down to be trained as an artist. If you don't have that, you never make it. You're, you'll be training, you'll be sitting there with everybody else. You, you, you will not make it, you know? Because what will carry you be, beyond that threshold that will make you an artist is that passion you have in you. Yeah. Do you think Ghana has a chance to cherish or appreciate We are not at that level yet. We are not at that level of appreciation yet, no. We are not. We don't, we don't, I won't say we even have a market here yet. There's, there's some movement in the right direction, yes, right now. But we still, we still are not there. The level of appreciation is so low compared to every, everywhere else. Because when you go to Nigeria, there's a middle class that compete to collect art. We don't, need, we don't have that. There's a middle class that competes to collect that. There are institutions collect that and support, sponsor, artists. They pick young artists up and sponsor them, and move them, build them up. We have nothing like that here. You know, I'm not saying there's nobody here doing anything. There are a few individuals who are here and there. But as an industry, it's not there. If I walk that parent into this space right now and he spends a few minutes, he will be convinced. One parent came to me, an engineer, came to my studio with, with his boy. He was coming to eat. The boy was in school with my, my daughter. So, and he was doing art. So the dad comes to drop me. He would just drop him at the gate and go away. Then one time he walked into the studio. He was looking at the works. Then he was like, oh, me, I'm an engineer, so I don't understand this. I like to calculate things. I don't understand any of this. And he, that's all he wants to do. And I said, so, this is what I'm, I've been doing for so many years. This is what I do to look after my family and all that. So what is wrong with that? 
you think your, your son cannot look after himself when, when he's an artist. The guy just, he just walked out and went out. It takes uh, a bit of education, it takes a bit of redirection of people's, people's thoughts because what is happening is that our society has been sidetracked and we seem to look at other cultures than ours. If we start looking within, we'll be able to see that we have everything we need here and then we start building up. It just takes a redirection of our of our uh, priorities and then we'll be able to go on a track that will help us develop our appreciation for art, our own art. Now we are looking outside. People, there are people who go out to buy, you know, art from outside, come and hang in their homes. There are people like that, you know, and they don't touch artists from here. That, those are the little things that need to change for us. Because we, we do have an eye. I mean, there are people, people love beautiful things. They don't get me wrong. But we are, we, the tendency is for us to look at other people's cultures and, and accept those above ours. That is where the problem is. If an artist puts up an exhibition and says, hey, it's not taking great for you. Musicians take get fee, everybody goes there, right? An artist opens an exhibition to the public, just come and have a look. What else can an artist do? An artist's work is to create. That creative process takes a lot of focus and, in, you know, concentration. And he does that and puts up work, an exhibition, and asks you, come and have a look offers it out there for people to appreciate. What else would an artist do to make it different? Now, when we talk about an industry, for instance, an artist has his place. We have people who call agents who have their places. We have those who call marketers who have their places. We have uh, those we call sponsors who help lift things up and all that. Now, we are losing our, the artist is present. We don't have any of the others in place. That is the problem. It's not the artist's job to now go, that is not the, it's really not the artist's job to now go trying to sell his work. No. In other jurisdictions, that doesn't happen. This is what I'm saying, that, that if you have an industry and you have certain elements in that industry missing, there's, there's definitely going to be, you know, a, a lack of, uh, uh, the promotion will be missing. You understand? There are no agents, there are no marketers, there are no publicists who come. You know, you, you have, let's, let's, let's put it this way, you have a show and you don't even have the media trying to cover it. The media is not interested in covering. There are few individuals who come in at the media. Let's say you are a TV station, you've come here. Now, if I knew about you, I would have invited you to come and cover this show for me and I'll see whether you would have showed up. You know, that's basically, the, that's what is, has happened over the years. And you try to, to help change it. We, we do a lot of work in, in that direction, trying to convince people to come and cover. They don't, you know, and so it's not, it's not about you see, music has a, a much uh, wider mass appeal. Okay, let's put it that way. So, um, I, I, I can be sitting in my chair listening to radio and, and the music just throws me, you understand? And I, I'll be dancing away. So if, if I'm that excited and then they say, I hear the musician is playing somewhere, I might go pay money and go see him. You, you understand where, I, where I'm coming from? With art, 
you have to come and have that one-on-one -on -one experience. That's why it's a bit confusing for a lot of people. Because you know that it doesn't have that mass appeal that you know you can sit in your home and, and experience, you know, without seeing it. This one you hear it with your ears and, and you are you are you are blown out. Okay. There's something about the art that will have to draw you in for you to experience it one on one. It's it's not a mass appeal thing that you find a lot of uh, a mass of people gathered here trying to know. Many people will go people will go to various things. A few will stand here and and try to decipher what they see or try to appreciate what they see. You know, that's the difference between the music and art. You understand? That that is why it's sometimes some people consider it uh, like it's a bourgeois thing. You understand? Which which really is not. My market is not here in Ghana, but this is where I live and this is where I work. That's why once in a while I do exhibitions here just to show people what alternatives are there. My market is not here. I don't, the number of people who buy my work in Ghana, I can count on my fingers, okay? Uh, but my, my market is not here. You know, my market is all over the world. I do exhibitions outside and everywhere. Yeah. I've been to many, many, many countries to show my work, yeah. How would you convince a parent If I walk that parent into this space right now and he spends a few minutes, he'll be convinced. That's, that's all I can say about that. You see, the thing is, they don't even make the effort to explore or to see. You know, I, I've taught kids, you know, students. And after my experience as a teacher, a lot of those parents happily allowed their kids to go. If they wanted to do art, they, you know, they did. Of course, a few of them still resisted it. And the kids would come back to me and say, my dad still doesn't want me. And then we, we would talk over the phone and all that. I said, you know, you allow. Uh, I mean, the, kids, the parents are playing their part. This is what they believe in. This, this, this is how far they understand. One parent came to me, an engineer, came to my studio with, with his boy. He was coming to, the boy was in school with my, my daughter. So, and he was doing art. So the boy came and said he wanted to, it, during the holidays, he would like to come and just get some practice. I said, fine. So the dad comes to drop me, he just drop me at the gate and go away. Then one time he walked into the studio. I was looking at the works. Then he was like, oh, me, I'm an engineer, so I don't understand this. I like to calculate things. I don't understand any of this. And he, that's all he wants to do. And I said, so this is what I'm, I've been doing for so many years. This is what I do to look after my family and all that. So what is wrong with that? You think your, your son cannot look after himself when, when he's an artist? The guy, just, he just walked out and went, <laughs> you know, but eventually he allowed the guy, the boy, to, to pursue at, 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 in college, you know? So it happens. It's, it's, it's just that, I mean, people, parents are scared. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't blame any of them. They are scared that they won't be giving their children, uh, you know, they, they, their children will not be protected properly financially and you know so that in the future if they allow them to go that way you, you understand what i'm saying so i don't blame them because they don't understand themselves so why should they allow their kids to pursue something they don't understand that's that's all it, it, there is to it you know i can't calculate numbers for the sake of me I can do this, and this is what I know, and I do it as well as I can, so that anybody looking at it will have no doubt in their minds that this is, this is somebody who has paid attention to his craft. That's all there is to it, in every field. 
You can be an engineer and be nothing. And you can be a, a, a scientist and be nothing. Because you don't have it there. That thing that will take you beyond the level where you can be something is not within you. It may, it may not be your, your, your choice, your, your, the field that you should be in. That's why you are not, you are not putting in enough to get over it. You understand? Yeah.